guys, welcome to Kotswala Putinani. Today, it is National Pizza Party and Chocolate Chip Day. You know what that means. Tell them, John. We made pizzas with chocolate chips on them, and I'm gonna win again. And we're, we're gonna do a taste test to see which of us three prepared the best pizza with chocolate chips on it. Jacob, come in here, get some close-ups. I'm gonna start by describing to you guys what I made here. Uh, I've got a homemade hand-tossed pizza with, uh, with a lot of chocolate chips, as you can see. I actually took the marinara sauce and I mixed it with the chocolate chips and warmed it up and stirred it all together. And got some basil leaves on there. Super stoked, excited to see what chocolate chips and pizza tastes like. Yeah. Here we have a, um, a Little Caesars. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I did make this myself, but the dough is pre-made. And I threw a lot of Italian cheese on top of some marinara and some semi-sweet chocolate chips and some milk chocolate chocolate chips for the um, surprise. And I tasted it and it's not that bad. So, <laughs> so here we go. As for mine, um, I was kind of inspired by my Great British Baking Show uh, binge watch. And one flavor that they talked about all the time was chocolate and chili. So I've got some uh, chili powder, some cayenne pepper in there. So it'll punch a little bit of a kick, but it's also got that sweet to balance it out. All right, well guys, uh, you heard it. Let's get going and see what happens. Am I gonna be in the center? Yeah. You gotta keep symmetry. It's Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so good. Does it? No. <laughs> <laughs> like we said before, this Friday when this video premieres is National, National Pizza Party Day and National Chocolate Chip Day. So we thought we would make some pizzas that feature chocolate chips. So what you've got there is three different pizzas prepared by three different chefs. You guys are gonna taste test them one at a time and you're gonna decide which one is your favorite, which one you prefer over the other two. And we're gonna see who's gonna win this contest. Uh, and here we've got... I'm Steve and honored to be a part of this uh, contest, contest today. I'm April. I uh, still don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> and I'm Adam and it looks Good. <laughs> all right, guys, let's start. Uh, go ahead and start with uh, the one, I think it's on all of your lefts. Well, compared to the other ones, it's a little bit thinner, mm -hmm. so I'm, but um, I can't taste much of the chocolate, really. That has, I would say that just has a hint of chocolate. I'll be anxious to see if the other ones uh, Maybe that's a have more. Thing. Maybe. We'll find out. Maybe. Yeah. See, this one, you just, you taste the pizza, and then you taste the chocolate, and it's, it's not a nice blend, to be honest. It, it's kind of a, a bad aftertaste. I can still taste it now. Mm. All right, well, let's mm. see if that's a theme. So like, go ahead and take the next slice. Uh, I think it's the, the, yeah, the center one for all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I think one bite's enough. Is it all good? It. It. Man, it's, <laughs> it's really a, a peppery. Mm. Um, mixed with that chocolate, it would just, <laughs> I can't say it's Second disgusting. <laughs> no. I wish the chocolate was a little more melted, though. That would be my Mine one Mine was pretty melted. Flesh. All right, well, guys, uh, go ahead and jump onto the last slice, and let's see what you think. OK, first of all, look at this. I'm going to go for it. A lot of chocolate on there. Looks like it kind of got rubbed. Zero flop. Zero flop, though. Yeah, look at that. That's a good point. Wow. Well, <laughs> this does not have the, the the spice of the second one. It probably is a little bit more what I thought it might taste like. <laughs> so this one, it, it kind of blends the chocolate a little bit better. I did add a little bit of the par Parmesan cheese to it, like suggested, and um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, so remember what we're judging here. Let's start with Adam. Let's hear your uh, your favorite. For total uniqueness and not expecting anything, I'm going to have to go with this this middle guy, the real spicy one, the second option, um, just because I had never experienced something like that before. I think it best matches what we were going for with the, the chocolate pizza. All right, April, which one's your favorite? Best option. Well, if we're going with the one that I could like, that I could handle, I'd say the first one. I think mm. we all agreed it didn't have as much chocolate. Mm -hmm. But this, the spice really, I think the spice was just, it's what a chocolate pizza needs. So what's what what your That, the middle one. The middle one? The second one. 
All right, so that means the second one wins no matter what Steve says. But Steve, what was your favorite? Well, I thought the first one was just a little, maybe a little even soggy or greasy on the top. I, it didn't do much for me. Um, <laughs> I think the, the I'm going to go with number two. I, I think it, it's most memorable because of the spices that were added. And I'm not sure that is what we were looking for, but I'm, I might be, or have to take a second bite of, of that one. So we're so, saying shock number two. value has won the day. Though. I think yeah. it did. It All right. Set itself uh, apart. Let's have the winner go ahead and step into frame so everyone can see. Tell them what was on it. Yeah, what is that spice? Um, well, so I watched the Great British Baking Show. Uh, it's a great show. Uh, one of the flavors they talk about a lot is like chili and chocolate, and mm. I'd never tried it before. Mm. And I'm like, you know, kind of bring it together, uh, I'm gonna add some chili powder and some cayenne pepper into the uh, pizza to make it a little bit more spicy to kind of balance out that sweetness that you'd get from the chocolate, so. All right, everyone, that's it for our pizza challenge. Congratulations, Nick, you're the winner. Great job, it's a good pizza. Steve, what do we have going on next? Uh, I understand we've got some, uh, some of our students sharing some of their favorite memories of journey groups this past year, so let's do it. In journey groups this year, God really taught me the importance of community. As a senior, I'm so thankful for my journey group and the bond that we've shared over the past four years. I truly wouldn't be where I am today in my walk with God without the support and encouragement of all of them. Hey everyone, I'm Jeff and uh, I think my favorite journey group memory is probably just getting together with guys and you know, discussing how our week's gone, you know, see how everyone's doing, catch up, and yeah, we call it highs and lows and that's probably my favorite part of journey group. I would say my favorite part about the student ministry is definitely the people. You get to connect with your small group on a weekly basis, and you also get to interact with people of other ages. And actually, one of my best friends, she's in eighth grade. Shout out to Addison Finley. Addison Finley here, I'm in the eighth grade, and three words to describe the community of Christ Community Church's journey groups are friends, faith, and love. Hi, uh, my name is Jack Hessel. Jacob, my journey group leader, has helped me understand that no matter where you are or what you're going through, you can always turn to God and that he's always listening to you. Even if you don't feel anything and even if you feel like you can't talk to anybody else, just always turn to God because he has your back. Hi everyone, I'm Jordan, I'm a senior leader. One of my favorite memories from this year was attending the LIFE conference in Orlando, Florida last July. It was such an awesome experience to be able to get to know students from all over the country as well as students that attended from Christ Community. I loved being able to serve and grow in faith with all of our students who were able to attend. This year I've grown in my relationship with God. I've learned that to build a relationship with God and Jesus I need to love them as much as they love me and everyone else in this world. I've learned that nothing is too little for them and that every second spent with them is very precious and fills my heart with joy. I've loved being a journey group leader this past year, just being able to watch my senior boys grow um, with one another, as well as to push me in my faith, ask a bunch of tough questions. I also absolutely love going to Fall Retreat and just seeing the relationships um, that occur there and just what God does and God really moves at Fall Retreat. My favorite part about student ministry this year was Fall Retreat because I got to ask a lot of questions about what it actually means to be a Christian. And I got to do a lot of fun things I wouldn't normally get to do. One of my favorite memories was um, asking uh, students, 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade students um, to lead their peers in a, a table of discussion and you guys rocked it. Uh, week after week uh, you guys uh, led your discussion in a way that uh, helped uh, others grow spiritually. I think the best part of middle school ministry was fall retreat. We got to have the whole group together, we got to have a blast and that's definitely the best part of middle school ministry. You know I don't think so. I think it was dodgeball. We got to have so much fun and we got a lot of good food. Well, do you think the best part of middle school ministry really was having your mom and dad as leaders? Well, now that you say it, yeah, it was. <laughs> Bye from Debbie Bye. and Jay. <laughs>
again, dude. We did it again. I don't know why. We... Uh, well, we're a little bit embarrassed about what we do for jobs sometimes, but uh, we're also excited about what's happening this summer in MSM and HSM at CCC. We love acronyms, if you didn't know. So this summer, Brad, tell them what's going on. Yeah, before we get to the details, we just want to let you know that our hope for you is that this summer is a summer of spiritual growth, one where you don't look back after three months and go, oh man, I kind of stayed stagnant in my faith, but instead, you're growing, you're thriving, Jesus is becoming more and more important in your life. So yeah, we've got some great stuff lined up for you. It's all going to be happening every Wednesday night starting on May 27th. So John 15, five says that if we want to grow as disciples, if we want to produce fruit, we have to stay connected to the vine that is Jesus. And one primary way we stay connected to Jesus that, that God designed us for is through community. So we want to offer that to you guys this summer, community so that you can grow and spur one another on towards love and good works and encourage one another to follow Jesus. So yeah, like Brad said, every Wednesday night starting May 27th, Middle school is going to be meeting at the church. Brad, where's high school going to be? High school is going to meet in four different houses and backyards all around the city. And all of us are going to be starting at 7.30. We're going to have a live Codswallop Boot Nanny. That's our YouTube show at 7.45 that we'll all watch together wherever we're at. And then after that, we're going to dive into a chapter of John every week. So it's going to be a lot of fun and hanging out as part of that. It's going to be studying John. It's going to be that community that we talked about, Codswallop Boot Nanny. It's going to be awesome to see each other. And parents, if you're nervous about social distancing, we're going to do all that kind of stuff just to stay safe during these times. That's right. We're excited to see you guys there. It's going to be a great summer. And uh, again, we're kind of sorry, but not really that we put the inner tubes on. We did it for you because we love you. Yeah, these. yeah.